Hi, it's Dwyer. It is October 28th, 2022, right? Uh, the first day of the World Series for this year. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. What are we going to do? We're going to talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me just say I like the Astros in the World Series. Um, I'll concede the Phillies are a live dog. But let's talk boxing. Now first, let's just keep it real. Crawford Spence is a huge fight if you're a hardcore fan of boxing. Right? It's not the Super Bowl. It's not the World Series. It doesn't have that level of market power. It just doesn't. The casual fan on the street, when you're talking about boxing, unless you're talking heavyweights or Canelo, they don't know what you're talking about. You could be naming the biggest names in the sport, certainly guys on the short list of the best in the sport and they won't know who you're talking about, right? You and I understand Crawford Spence is a unification match at 147. It's a battle of unbeatens. The person on the street who's dealing with a rough economy, who has to make choices on what they spend money on, who right now is thinking about the rising price of food, feeding their family, prioritizing that, who's thinking about the rising cost of gas and how much it's going to cost them to get to work and prioritizing that. Let's just say in that world, a welterweight title fight that doesn't involve Ray Leonard and Thomas the Hitman Hearns isn't going to move the needle. Right? So, Spence Crawford is not happening Let's take another step. Talk about the economics of boxing. You just had a very intriguing fight at heavyweight. Right? Five-year heavyweight champion, Deontay Wilder, fighting Robert Hellenius, who has one of the biggest punches at heavyweight. And there was familiarity between the two guys because the two guys had sparred extensively in private. So you thought, okay, in this fight between two punchers, right, the fight taking place in New York City, you thought there was intrigue, right? Whoever was better, the opponent only had to be right once, right? Guys with big punchers are always in the fight. They always have a chance to win the fight. But yet that fight, only pulled 75,000 pay-per-view buys, according to reports. 75,000 pay-per-view buys. Understand, here in the States, they were trying to sell that fight at something like $74.99 for the pay-per-view. Right? Don't assume that the people in charge know what they're doing. Right? They probably, in my opinion, would have gotten at least twice as many pay-per-view buys had they cut the price to $39.99. Does anyone in power understand that these are hard economic times? That a lot of people are thinking they're having vision problems when they look at their electric bill. They're saying, no, no, that couldn't be right. They're looking at it three, four times because they can't believe the numbers. And you're expecting folks to pay more than $70 for a fight, even if it's an intriguing heavyweight fight. Well, Spence Crawford, or Crawford Spence, falls apart because some new group, relatively new, they've been in business, but not the big time stepped in and offered Crawford $10 million. According to reports, again, 
ten million dollars to fight David Avenesian, right? A European champion. Now, I just want to say if Deontay Wilder's fight pulled less than a hundred thousand pay per view buys, I just don't know where this new company is going to be able to make a profit. Right? If the market wasn't going to provide Terence Crawford with $10 million to fight Errol Spence, I don't know how the market is going to provide him with $10 million to fight David Evanesian. Right? Just understand. Uh, promoters stick their necks out. Right? When there's a shortfall, you have a lot of interesting stories and in folklore. You have Don King meeting with Ali, according to folklore, with a suitcase full of cash. Right? To pay Ali after a promotion came up short. Right? One wonders why Ali didn't say, hey, player, I'm going to sue you. I don't want a suitcase full of cash that is less than the numbers on the contract I signed. One wonders why that didn't happen. But to be blunt, Ali's smarter than most of us. He must have understood. Right? When you sue someone, you can only get the money they have. <laughs> if they don't have the money, then they're judgment proof. Right? Also, Ali may have understood. Don King and him had a long-standing business relationship, right? He wanted Don to do well. He wanted the sport to do well. He wanted to do business in the future with Don. Ali may have understood when he signed the contract that the numbers on the contract might not be fully enforceable, right? Let's hope Terrence Crawford has a vision like Muhammad Ali had. The curious thing with this fight is that it's better than advertised. Right? Let me back up and talk about what I mean. You just had a huge fight. When I say just, I mean within the last 12 months or so. Between two guys who had the heavyweight belts at one point. Right? It was a huge fight. You had a puncher versus, in my opinion, the top shelf in the heavyweight division. Right? Multifaceted guy. So, Deontay Wilder, the puncher in the fight. Let's not kid ourselves. Tyson Fury doesn't punch as hard as Deontay Wilder does with his right hand. The puncher drops Fury twice. Right? Twice. And then, in a situation only boxing can deliver, in a situation where styles make fights, the non-puncher decided to go inside because the puncher, the guy with the power, didn't have that power deep in the pocket. Right? So then, of course, Tyson Fury coming inside on Deontay Wilder clears his head. Right? And then, of course, is able to dominate the fight from the inside. Understand, and let's be clear here, Whether you know David of Venetian or not, just understand that Terence Crawford, whether he's paid $10 million or money in a suitcase, Terence Crawford does not have that option. Because, and understand as I say this, I consider Crawford to be the best in the sport, pound for pound. Right? Crawford doesn't have that option because Styles make fights and David Avenesian is better than Terrence Crawford, deep in the pocket. Just understand that Avenesian is a lot like Errol Spence, 
He's a mid to short range hooker. Right, folks? Deep in the pocket, Avenesian has few peers. So this is the fight where Terrence Crawford, and understand Crawford's not who you think he is. Crawford's not some mild-mannered technician guy. No, Crawford's a closer. Look at the knockouts. Sean Porter goes the distance with Errol Spence. He does not go the distance with Terrence Crawford. I'm just telling you that the closer in a Crawford-Spence fight would be Terrence Crawford. Just understand in this fight, and again, styles make fights. If you get one takeaway from this video, it's that styles make fights. In this fight, Crawford will not be able to stay deep in the pocket. If he gets hurt by Avenesian, like Tyson Fury, another great fighter, got hurt by Deontay Wilder, this fight is over. Right? Let's throw out another name. Because understand, because styles make fights, and I can say Fury is the top shelf, I believe Fury will have a lot of problems with Alexander Usyk. Right? Every great fighter has their kryptonite out there. Right? Thomas the Hitman Hearns, great fighter, lost twice to Iran Barkley. Understand, Shane Mosley lost twice to Vernon Forrest. Crawford, a closer, is going to have to be outside, just like Mean Machine, one of the elites at 147. Don't kid yourself. Really the blueprint on how to fight Terrence Crawford. Not a blueprint Avenesian can follow because Avenesian doesn't have that skill set. But understand, Mean Machine beat Avenesian by staying outside. Look at the film of that fight. Mean Machine who has a huge punch himself, who dropped Crawford, who dropped Virgil Ortiz, right? Who, as an aside, has one of the best jabs in boxing, right? Just understand Mean Machine, who hid his hands, was low volume against Terrence Crawford, right? That's how you have to fight a guy who's a master counterpuncher who's trying to read you. Understand that Mean Machine stays outside against Avenesian because he understood, and Mean Machine is one of the elites at 147, he understood he could not hang deep in the pocket against Avenesian. Right? Inside fighting is an art. If you can't shorten your punches... If you don't hit hard enough, if you can't lean into the guy you're fighting so he can't find you as you're up on him, then you're going to be out of your league. So in this fight, just understand that Crawford, one of the sport's best closers, is going to have to stay outside at least for a few rounds, to soften up Avenesian, just like Mean Machine did. The fight Crawford has to fight, in my opinion, to win. And I understand the fight's in Crawford's backyard. I get it. But again, styles make fights. Just because you're a closer doesn't mean you're the man deep in the pocket. The fight Crawford's going to have to fight is the fight I believe he would have had to have fought against Errol Spence. The outside. Let the other guy know he's going to have to pay a toll. He's going to have to climb a mountain to get close to you. Force the inside fighter 
to show you what he could do from the outside. That's what Crawford's going to do. Folks, it's a riveting fight. Riveting. Let me also say, too, Crawford's a great counterpuncher. Crawford also is a great lead puncher. Right? Crawford needs to be a jabber. He needs to slow this fight down in a way that Clarissa Shields and Savannah Marshall were unable to slow down their fight. Right? Be outside, popping a jab, make Avenesia know, hey, you are not going to be mid-range to throw those mid-range hooks. You are not going to be short-range to throw those short-range hooks until I have hit you from distance a few times, softened up your game, have you guessing on where I'm going to be. Then I'll get inside, then I'll start bouncing, then I'll start looking like Terrence Crawford looked in the closing rounds against Mean Machine after he got off the canvas. So this is that interesting fight where the opponent actually has a better chance than people realize. Where style-wise, this is one of the best opponents who could be picked to give Terrence Crawford a tough fight. Folks, this is not a walk in the park. I believe part of your betting portfolio has to be Avenesian by stoppage. Let's go further. I'm expecting a stoppage in the fight. Why? Because Crawford is one of the premier closers in the sport. Right? I believe Avenesian is going to have to throw caution to the wind. This is going to be his opportunity. Both of these guys are in their mid-30s, folks. You're in your mid-30s. You understand I might not get this opportunity again. Avenesian's going to have to run in. He can't fight the fight he fought against Mean Machine. He can't. By the way, that's the last fight he lost. I believe since then, none of his fights have gone the distance. So he's going to have to stalk Terrence Crawford. He can't be polite about it. Crawford is going to have to be on his back foot. Right? Think about that. One of boxing's premier closers is going to have to be on his back foot in a fight in his backyard. But Crawford's going to have to be on his back foot, pick his spots. Show Deontay Wilder type ring coverage. In other words, be able to throw hard punches from distance. Let me just say too, Crawford's ambidexterity goes out the window because Avenician is not a jabber. He's a smotherer. Right, so he's going to be trying to come in on Crawford to cut off the angles, not to live off the angles. So the fact that Crawford is lefty, Crawford's righty, that's not going to matter. Now, truth be told, Crawford is a master boxer. Truth be told, Crawford can look at the Mean Machine film and see the blueprint on how to fight Avenesian. But here's where politics comes in. Right? You have a new pay-per-view group. You have Crawford, who has to be chagrined over the treatment he received in the Errol Spence negotiations. Right, I'm sure he was hearing that he's not a pay-per-view king. I'm sure he was hearing. And keep in mind, this is a guy who's unbeaten as I make this video, who's been undisputed in another way class. I'm sure he was hearing that he's the B-side, right? I'm sure Crawford showed up and said, look, I, 
you know, let's just split this down the middle. And then they told him, no, 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 no. Spence should get more than half the pie. So Crawford has, we'll call it a chip on his shoulder here, right? When a guy is fighting at home, he wants to put an exclamation point on the performance. He's fighting in front of friends and family. He wants to make sure that when they leave the arena, they're saying, yeah, yeah, our guy delivered. Right? Old Terrence, he taught this guy. He delivered. So I get the feeling Crawford is not going to be content fighting the fight that Anthony Joshua fought in the Andy Ruiz rematch. Right? Crawford's not going to be moving and then say, okay, well, I have enough rounds banked. Let me just win this on the scorecards, keep my title. No, no. Folks, personality takes over. Crawford's accustomed to ending fights. Right? As Billy D used to say about Colt 45, don't let the smooth taste fool you. Right? So. I'm expecting a stoppage in the fight. Yes, I'm expecting the guy I consider to be the best fighter in the sport pound for pound to win this fight. But, and let's hope the casino is silly enough. I haven't seen posted odds on this fight yet, but let's hope the casino is silly enough to give me greater than 5-1 to one odds on Avenesian by stoppage. Right, that is going to be part of my betting portfolio. Because Avenesian hits hard. Because Avenesian has the advantage. Let me repeat that. Has the advantage. Deep in the pocket. What folks mean when they say styles make fights is that a certain style by the opponent is going to place the favorite at a disadvantage. Right? If Crawford comes out, we've seen this before, not with Crawford, but with other fighters. Anthony Joshua, the first Andy Ruiz fight. If Crawford comes out and he's a bit caught up with himself and he wants to make a statement, Joshua was fighting in New York City for the first time. He wanted to show... The crowd, hey, here I am. I'm the UK guy who's about to take over your country. Right here, Terrence Crawford might show up and say, hey, I'm rolling with the new pay-per-view team. Folks need to understand I'm the B-side to nobody in my division. Right? You need to treat me with respect, and I'm going to show you why. If he comes in reckless, just understand that if he tries to crash the pocket early, he might get stopped. That might sound shocking until you look at the footage of him against Mean Machine. Folks, he's dropped in that fight. Right? The referee may not have understood it in real time, right? Refs have a lot going on, right? The crowd, the fighters, you know, I'm sure the ref just assumed, well, this is Terrence Crawford. Right, folks, I need for you to understand that this is boxing. Just like Tyson Fury was dropped not once but twice by Deontay Wilder early, early in their last fight. Great fighters can get dropped. Right? Marvin Hagler was dropped by Juan Rodan. I know old timers come out the woodwork and say, oh, you got to be kidding. Uh, you know, look, all I can say is look at the films. Right? Just like Crawford got dropped by Mean Machine. Understand, he could get dropped by this guy if he's reckless. He's going to have to be careful. He's going to have to stay outside. He's going to have to establish distance. He's going to have to force Avenesian, who I'm sure is going to be trying to get deep in the pocket where he has an advantage. He's going to have to force Avenesian to walk into shots. So you're going to see timing. You're going to see movement. If Crawford doesn't move, 
he's going to be in trouble. I think Crawford wins the fight. The way I'm playing it to get odds is to bet that the fight doesn't go the distance. Because I get stronger odds, taking the underdog by KO, part of my betting portfolio is going to be on Avenesian by stoppage. That's how I see it. I think Crawford wins, but the, the way I'm playing it is fight doesn't go the distance, hedged with Avenesian by stoppage. If Avenesian gets the stoppage, you can find me in the penthouse. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.